Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Shanika Beckford and if you are new here then welcome please make sure you subscribe please make sure you smash the like button comment down below and please share with someone and for those that have been supporting me for the longest while thank you very much i really appreciate it um it has been a tremendous blessing for the channel the channel has grown so much and when we talk about channel growth if you're a youtuber then you know it's not about how many subscribers you have it goes way below it goes way um deeper than subscribers but please make sure y'all are subscribed keep watching the video i have really great content coming up um i have this series that i want to do can't tell you guys what it is as yet but there's something very awesome that we're planning on doing on this channel very soon so stay tuned because great things are in store now today without without any further ado today i'll be sharing on a um a topic with you uh seven signs that you are a prophet in office or that you're truly called to be a prophet in office that they usually do not tell you or talk about so that's what i'm going to get into today so as i said make sure you go ahead and smash smash that like button smash that subscribe button all right um but let's go straight into today's video no more um delay So the first one is, as I said, signs that you're truly called to be a prophet that they do not tell you about. Number one is the persecution. Now, this video is not necessarily talking about signs or um, prerequisites or what you go through in order to become a prophet. This is what you endure while you are a prophet or while you are operating in the office of a prophet. Uh, perhaps I should reconsider the title of this video um things they do not tell you about being a prophet in office that you should know okay anyways drop the title below if you're watching comment what the title should really be we'll figure it out when we get to that place um i'm, I'm not blooping this out i'm not editing this out this is real life stuff when you are a youtuber but anyways um the persecution so number one is persecution as a prophet in office or a prophetess in office, prophet is usually uh, used or coined to describe both male and female, but a prophet more specifically speaks to the male gender while a prophetess speaks to the female gender. In most cases, people usually just use the word prophet to describe both male and female. Now, when I say prophet, I'm speaking generally for whether you are a male or a female. The persecution a prophet goes through or endures it is unmatched people will fight against you consistently the warfare it's not normal people will call you names people will call you a witch as a prophet you will be extremely loved or hated and one of the results of um one of the the results of of, of affliction or persecution is a lot of people will call you a witch if you're called to the prophetic and you can't withstand being called names you can't withstand people saying oh she's a obia worker she's a juju man or she's a witch then this office is not for you i have seen i have studied the life of many great um evan uh, televangelists prophet televangelists prophets across the nation for example the late tb joshua that died there are many persons that seriously and really believe that this man was an obia worker or that he got his power from some juju or um some witchcraft um sources i'm not here to say whether that is true or not i seriously honor that man of god for the work that he has done for the the legacy that he has left behind and many persons that criticize judge and call him an, a witchcraft worker or someone that got his powers from witchcraft worker have not even come to the place or do not have the capacity to walk in at least one third of the glory of the grace that was upon his life so as a prophet people will call you witch people will call you a warlock people will call you so many names so there are some that will honor you for the grace that is on your life and there are others that will spread that will spread this thing like it's the gospel they'll, they'll spread rumors that you're called to be a witch and so it's just something that as a prophet you have to have a tough skin 
you have to have a tough stick skin and you have to be strong to stand in the office that God has called you knowing that men did not call you but God has called you and so when men begin to scandal or rumor you or whatever it is then you can truly stand because you know that what you are doing is for God so you have to be completely strong you have to be tough skinned you have to be rigid you can't be um, you can't be so fluid and easy to be discouraged or easy to just cave in or giving or run to the cave to hide no you have to be strong you have to be resilient you have to be um, in a serious relationship with God where he can strengthen you and encourage and push you or else you quit you will seriously quit so that's number one if you are a prophet or you believe that you're truly called to the prophetic you are enduring or you are experiencing serious persecution i want you to comment down below let me know you're not alone eh you are not alone um number two is unending prior life as a prophet when you're called to the, the prophetic usually you you birth your prophetic office or your prof prophetic gift through prior no to be sustained in the office of a prophet you you have to have an unending prior life you can't pray when you're about to preach alone or you pray when you're about to do ministry no your life must be centered built erected founded established kept sustained maintained through prior prior is the air that you breathe you do not get a day off as a prophet you don't get a day off you have to constantly be in prayers because you have to build one you have to build that relationship with god two you are fighting against witches and warlocks vice versa witches warlocks fighting against what you're carrying and who sent you on your purpose your destiny it's a constant warfare it is a constant warfare it's a constant battle remember the bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers so you're not fighting against those who are fighting against you those who left the church those who are calling you which those who are calling you uh jezebel those who are calling you a obia man those that think that you're not worthy to be a prophet you're not fighting against them but you're fighting against a spiritual wickedness a power that is fighting against you through such a person and so you have to understand that we're not fighting against man but it's a spiritual warfare which means that you cannot come out of prior there are days where you would want to sleep but you have to be praying there are days you want to take a break but you have to be praying there are days you want oh my i just need a break for a second this jezebel this witch in my family is after me. I just need a second. But you have to be praying on ending. Paul says, pray without ceasing. When you're called to be a prophet, you definitely will be praying without ceasing because it's not an easy road. If you're a prophet and you have encountered the fact that you need to spend so much time in prayer, even when you're tired, your spirit man is pushing you to pray because the prayers need to ascend. Comment down below and let me know. Number three is that Jezebel is always after you so as a prophet the Jezebel spirit is always looking always seeking to destroy the prophet if you know the story of Elijah and the Jezebel where Jezebel has consistently been sending threats that he will destroy him that he would kill him and all of that then you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about wherever there is a prophet there's also a jezebel that is seeking to destroy that person jezebels will try to destroy your your um they will try to defame you they'll try to um mess up your character in the sense where they will tell lies they will spread propaganda they will spell gossip slander trying to cause your name to be um slandered and uh degraded you name it jezebel will try to do it they'll make you out to be witches um they'll make you out to be so evil so messy they'll say that you're not anointed you're not this rather you are a witchcraft worker and then they will try to make it seem as though you are attacking them and they play victim for certain things as opposed to as opposed to that um jezebel will just go the extreme to destroy you they'll create altars they'll do whatever is necessary 
in order to destroy the prophets um as per scripture if you read um in the bible you'll see the extent to what jezebel went through to ensure that he would um she rather would destroy elijah so if you're called to be a prophet just best believe that there's going to be a jezebel that will be after you one that will not give up one that will continue that will persistently pursue you so you have to be uh seriously grounded in prayer you have to seriously be grounded in fasting and in a solid serious relationship with god so that he can sustain you because only god can sustain you jezebel's priests out there and they're like they're pretty much like the devil from hell they will not give up they don't give up so easily and i do believe a lot of times that god allows these things that happen sometimes to humble you to keep you humble to also keep you in power because it's easy for prophets to um it's easy for prophets to fall into the pitfalls of pride and arrogance and so on and so forth especially where people are constantly loving you um appraising you giving you accolades for your prophecy um, you doing deliverance and all that you do if you're not careful by the time people finish appraising you for your service that the Lord is using you to do it might just it might just get into your head and you may begin to praise and worship yourself other than God and so sometimes God will allow these Jezebels and these things to happen to keep you humble to keep you on your knees in prayer it's a part of the process don't give up continue to trust God but if you are encountering Jezebel warfare or attacks or the um, effects of being attacked by a Jezebel please comment down below let me know what your experience is like I'd really like to hear um, number four is um, pain to give birth to each new level as a prophet I, be, I do believe that each level that God takes you to that you will go through um, a certain amount of warfare a certain amount of pressure that God will cause you to undergo before he lifts you or ascends you to a certain dimension that he will cause you to operate in and this goes straight across the board usually we do preach and we say that before God blesses you he will test you he will try you he will process you and all of that I do believe that for the prophet However, because of the grace, because of the level or the depth of the grace that the prophet carries, I do believe that the warfare and the process that they go through, that God will truly break his prophet in order to elevate them. I uh, remember the Bible said that Elijah, Elijah had to go and hide in a cave. He went and he hid in a cave and he would not come out. He began to cry. I wish I would die. I cursed the day I was born. Can you imagine a power? powerful prophet like Elijah that had just killed over 450 prophets of Baal no he's hiding in a cave wishing that he would die why am I here why am I alive can you imagine a prophet saying that can you imagine me saying why am I alive I wish I would die I can't manage Jezebel wants to kill me God just kill me and don't just let it be over with just take my life I can't do this anymore can you imagine there are many people that would say oh I thought you were called to be a prophet oh you're weak oh you you they're, you're you're you you you're not strong enough or you're not ready for this because you want to give up or whatever it is no when jezebels begin to torment you and pursue you that's a whole another story jezebels will make you feel as though you are going insane jezebels will attack you to the point where it messes with your mind and if you're not if you're not if you're not careful and you're not locked into power it may make you feel as though you are losing your mind you're going local you're going crazy crazy you're going mad you have to be very careful and so each time God wants to um, ascend or lift someone to another level or cause them to operate in another dimension you will go through a level of um, processing or warfare that will that will bless you or lift you to that particular place that God wants you to operate in so that's number four number five is the burden of the lord to do what he has assigned you to do despite everything that you're going through no despite the jezebels chasing you despite the warfare that comes with the office despite people who don't like you despite all despite 
everything that is happening around you as a prophet in office there is still a burden that is on the inside of your spirit that keeps pushing you that keeps driving you that keeps plunging you into the assignment so even though there's so many things happening and there there, there might come a day where oh i can't be bothered for those of you who are pastors that may say oh I, i'm just going to shut the church down and go whatever or i'm going to leave ministry i'm not going to do this revival in this state or whatever it is i'm going i'm just call it a day and just live with my family and spend time with my family my wife and kids there'll definitely be those days where you feel like giving up you say you're gonna give up but by the time you go into prayer or by the time you go lay down or whatever it is the holy spirit just comes up on you and that vision that dream that drive that burden on the inside of your spirit it just come alive and so when you thought that you were gonna give up you are more driven than anything else prophets do not quit prophets do not give up just like that they are driven by the burden for the assignment that god has placed within them so if that's you people hurt you but you're still driven to do good you bless people they turn around they fight against you but you're still driven to help people nonetheless uh people persecute you they scandal they tell lies on you but you're still driven to do what it is that god has called you to do and people say how do you do it if it were me i would never help them the way you do i would never do what you do but when you have a burden it carries you it pushes you and it fuels you if you understand what i'm talking about please comment down below also let me know um so two more i'll share two more um so number six is love and honor prophets experience great love and honor i don't just want to come and share just bad stuff with you um that oh prophets go through warfare jezebels want to kill them and this and that no prophets also experience great honor and love while there's great hate and great persecution there are also people who are set up to truly honor and bless the prophet that will serve the prophet in whatever they do that will help them that will love them and make it feel like yes they're doing something not that they're here for people to say yeah you're doing something good and we love you or whatever that will drive them we're not driven by the love of man but at the same time where you have the presence of someone that can encourage you that can pray with you pray for you it's also very motivating it's also very um very encouraging to know that what you're doing someone is being blessed by it, someone is receiving from it it's very encouraging um in ministry as a pastor or as a itinerary preacher it's very encouraging encouraging and number seven the final one i want to share with you is there's always provision despite everything that prophets go through there is always provision a prophet will go through dry seasons where it seems like the brook has dried up like elijah but even when the brook has dried up then the bible said that he an angel came and fed him and said you better eat because the journey you're going on if you go